Mm -hmm. uh, government business has stalled, Dr. Adamako Kisi, and it's mm -hmm. partly because you're not even able to form a quorum. Last time I checked, 41 people showing up, not enough for you to, you know, form a quorum, start government business. What exactly is happening? I've heard so many stories about the fact to transact certain business, aka t uh, pivotal among them, the e-levy, so they are not even bothering to come. But, but, but that is not what we voted you uh, in there to go and do. W what is happening? Why are members of parliament not showing up in parliament? Well, um, let me say a few things. And it's been a very uh, unusual scenario in parliament. And we all need to come to terms with the fact that never did we think that there will be a government with an opposition uh, mindset quota scenario. Never did we think that there'll be what we call uh, a 137 uh, NDC. Knife-edge parliament. 137 MPP with one individual uh, who is the Formina MP, an independent candidate, who then would choose to do business with one party or the other. These are very unusual scenarios from a statistical standpoint. And the, the, the rules of the game, as it was, did not anticipate these two things happening. Foresight uh, no. from the framers of... It, it, because I've, I've heard Professor, yeah. and, and again, I'm sorry I'm interjecting, but Professor Asari, mm -hmm. uh, Asari, for example, has made mention of the fact that even when we get to the deputies and their voting rights and others, there were certain things that from independence, the independence constitution, from uh, the Republican constitution, mm -hmm. 1960 and all of that, that we've had, took stock of. And suddenly in 1992, we decided to jettison uh, these and part of those are resulting in the problems uh, we, we are seeing. So, so clearly, happened happened. Parliament did not pause to say that. Wait, as we proceed, we anticipate these challenges. As a house, how are we going to deal with these? Because these are going to be the scenarios that can play out. And 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 I must admit that we we were hoping against hope that things will gel appropriately. Unfortunately, that has not been the case. And I really think that both sides, we owe it to ourselves to really sit down and then come to some level entirely fit for the scenario we're in. And, and both sides have to admit to that. Uh, quick, 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 you know? query action from you, Alhazen. Your standing orders are as they are. Uh, are there any problems uh, with them? I'll, I'll come back to you. I just want to get your quick take on that. Because the dynamics on the ground has changed. Uh, uh, I, I, I even believe I have heard, I don't know whether it's from the chairman of the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee on Sunday, but talk of the fact that the standing orders themselves, that there's been a bit of a process of looking into the institution. Is this still fit for purpose? Is this still reflecting the aspirations of the people? Do you, do you, do you concur? I mean, that is something that uh, is a no-brainer. We have had the Constitutional Review uh, Commission uh, do its work. Uh, so 30 years on, uh, life is not static. It is obviously going to uh, be wise to want to look at, you know, the Constitution. And, of course, the standing orders as well. And many other, you know, uh, uh, laws that we have been operating uh, with in the country to, f to see if if they are fit for purpose or there's a need to tweak and fine tune them. So we could have, so avoided, is, we could have avoided some of these problems if, no. if, we had, if we had been doing some of these refresher no, 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 touch -ups. No. I don't think there are problems. You see, for example, I do know that uh, the, in the last parliament, uh, there was a committee put in place to look at new standing orders. Mm. So we've been doing that. So what happened? It's still, it's still work in process. I mean, in progress, I think. So seventh parliament to eighth parliament, it took this situation to get you to jumpstart. I mean... No, no, no. no we, and, 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 and you see, the, the, the seventh parliament couldn't conclude on it. In fact, the eighth parliament, we even delayed informing committees because it guides the formation of committees. Mm. Then some other issues came up. The issues relating to, uh, especially with, with the current situation. So even as the seventh parliament considered new standing orders, they did not also anticipate the structure that we have now. Mm -hmm. So those issues then came up and they said, wait a minute, let's not rush to adopt it, only to want to change it again in, 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 in a, a year or two. So let's take our time and fine tune it. So it's not like jump starting it because this is happening. I mean, it's, it's, it's a living organism, it grows. 
and, 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 and things will, 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 will continue to change as, as uh, society uh, uh, evolves. So, so, so yes, clearly, so, and, and back to the point. So clearly, the grounds have changed, and and I really think that, as as a matter of uh, urgency, we need to sit down as a house, mm. and and Jojo, without ideologies of uh, entrenchment, or of some sort, and let's really address the fact that the standing orders, as it stands now, uh, need to be adjusted per what has has happened. Until then these fights will continue. Now, there's another key thing that I really beg uh, you know, Ghanaians to be aware of. No institution is on its own. As we fully are aware, when we uh, got voted, myself, got voted uh, in December of uh, 2020, I was not the MP until I was sworn in on the 7th. When the speaker was voted for, he needed the Supreme Court justice the, 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 you know, to come and swear him in. So he was not with authority until the justice uh, you know, arm of uh, you know, government came to empower him. And then he had the authority to then empower who? The executive, which is the president. So the most supreme document in this country, whether you eat Indomin or Gary or whatever, is this document, which is the constitution. And the Constitution uh, can be subjected to various interpretation. And the only house, August House, empowered or mandated in our you know, framers' uh, mindset is the Supreme Court Justice. Not Parliament, not the Executive, mm. but the Supreme Court Justice. And when there are issues on the floor and we are not seen eye to eye, it is appropriate that we go back to the, 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 the authority mm. on, in, this, in this country, and that is a constitution. It's interesting because, and, again, that, that, mm -hmm. that feeds into another conversation we are having. It weaves into the fact yeah. that we now have the Supreme Court ruling and saying that deputies can actually exercise the vote. And some have said that, yes, this is simple logic. Others have said, and even as you help me, yes. what is your reaction to this ruling by you know this would not have been an issue if we had a huge gap in terms of the ndc mpp number of parliamentarians because then if it was a five gap or even a four gap mm. whether the deputy votes or not it won't matter right you understand but we're in a scenario where uh, that single vote matters that is why this issue is now relevant today in the seventh parliament, this would not have been an issue because 169. But, but we, we should have foreseen. Well, that, that well, we nobody anticipated this. No, but hand parliaments in, happen in all eight. the time in well, other jurisdictions. Fine. Now, coming back to some of the arguments, my best argument so far, and, and I think that members of parliament who become ministers are not deprived of their ministerial, oh, sorry, their MPship privileges by virtue of the fact that they've added on another position. Uh, if you're a district, do all these things. But, but technically, you're it looking doesn't. at two different uh, areas. I mean, we're talking executive and legislature. I mean, well, two, so, so, they, they, so, they don't so, come together. So in the legislative... In, in this instance, okay, it, it so, is the so, same House of Parliament. So in the legislative work, does the minority leader lose all his privileges because he's become minority leader? Mm. Does he not vote? Does the majority leader stop voting because he's a member of parliament and now has a bigger position, that is not the case. And I, I can't seem to, and, and I beg to differ in all the other arguments that my, uh, you know, other people are, you know, peddling. Let's be honest with ourselves. I mean, and, and the beautiful thing is, any of us can be appointed to preside, even right. in the absence right. of the two deputies. Right. In and the absence that, of the speaker, the, the two deputies, yes. any of you could be you know, presiding. Uh, and does that mean that that momentary period where you are 